Okay, and welcome to this month's Going Native. As always, I'm Steve Carroll, the dev manager for the Microsoft C++ team. And with us today, we have... Hi, uh, my name is Ulzi, uh, Ulzi Lofsamat. I am the uh, engineering manager for the uh, Microsoft compiler, C++ compiler front-end team. The team that's responsible for lexing and parsing the C++ code. Okay, great. So today we have a big announcement. What is it? So uh, today with Visual Studio 2017, uh, uh, 15.7 release, uh, the compiler team is happy to announce that the rejuvenation project that we've been uh, undertaking the last six years We've had a big milestone in, in catching up with the C++ standards that we, uh, they, we have been working on. Right, so this is the end, of, it's the uh, last major milestone in the long road that we've been working towards. Um, so we've talked about the rejuvenation project before on the thing, I think we had uh, Jim and Mark on to talk about that, the details of that. Um, but can, can you give folks just a quick overview of what we've been up to and why? Yeah, um, so rejuvenation project, uh, Essentially means uh, we, we have a very old code base uh, for the MSVC compiler, uh, rightfully so. It, you know, it dates back to 1982 or so uh, with, the, with the comments inside. And we, we never really had a chance to rewrite from scratch uh, in, in the last 36, 37 uh, years. And, and you still haven't. <laughs> yeah, and, and we still haven't. But we always had to fitch, uh, I mean, uh, ship uh, features based on this code base and, and keep up with the C++ standards, new evolving language, as well as demands and requests from uh, internal teams and mm -hmm. customers around our compiler and, and C++ features. So rejuvenation essentially means, okay, let's, let's take a look at this, uh, the, co the old code base we have, and let's try to replace parts, uh, if not the whole thing, and, and modernize it in a way that we can accommodate latest new C++ advanced features, as well as make it more efficient uh, and, 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 easy, and make it bug-free going forward. Yeah, so, and I, I think that the key thing that I really want to drive home for people is like, like the, the state of the art of how to build and architect a compiler has changed a lot over the past 30 years. And so because we're still, we were still six years ago using that architecture, there were all sorts of things that were, like it, it required basically ma magic of uh, very dedicated developers to try to get them to work. I think like just doing very attic templates in the old code base was something like a miracle. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't want any more miracles. We wanted to make it uh, a better place for us to get things done in so that we could keep up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, you know, one, one, one clear example is uh, the compiler was written in a way that we couldn't do two-phase in lookup, uh, which unfortunately meant a lot of the C++, advanced C++ features depended on this, uh, this behavior of the compiler. Because the code had been written that way, yes. right? Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, we say six years ago for rejuvenation, and, and the, 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 the actual thing that happened was uh, with Visual Studio 2015 RTW release, uh, we re we added a new fully bound semantic tree that replaced the old model for static analysis, uh, uh, an ASD tree that was different from what the compiler had internally uh, right. generated code to the back end. And, and, and this is the thing that would have been like, if you use slash analyze in the product, you were hitting these code paths. But if you yes. weren't hitting slash analyze, you probably didn't notice we did all that work. Yeah, so yeah. Th that was a huge milestone in terms of the rejuvenation work. Uh, there was little visible value to the customers outside, and uh, the fact that many customers didn't even notice that we did it, that is, is the, 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 uh, the, the successful outcome, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, but after that though, uh, because we had that, the foundation tree uh, implemented in the, inside the compiler, we were able to focus more on creating a, a syntax uh, accurate tree, or a, an AST, abstract syntax tree, uh, top down, in order to support, actually enable the two-phase name lookup and all the other advanced C++ features. And I think we also, we, we completely rewrote the parser. Exactly, so to do that, uh, we obviously could not uh, continue on with the old parser. The old parser here is a YAC-generated uh, 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 parser. And um, while that was good enough to do a lot of things over the many years, uh, we needed to you know, totally replace that with a new recursive descent parser. Uh, in the compiler. But the, the challenge was uh, we needed to do that in place. Uh, so today, a lot of you don't, don't know, the two parsers are actually running side by side uh, in order to support all these <laughs> and, and like features. What, um, 
I want to really stress for people that the fact that like we had to take that choice because of the fact of how much code exists in the universe that requires all of the the quirks of our non-standardized version of C++. Yeah. So we really had to find a way that would that we could chart through um, both keeping people's customers code that they also wrote in 1982 and yeah. expect to keep working every time they get a new version of Visual Studio yeah. while still being able to add all these magical new, you know, fancy features that are from C++ 11, 14, and 17. Yeah. It's like swimming in between, which brings us to permissive minus, I think, right? Yes. So, um, as you just said, uh, we have obligation to many of our loyal customers and, and we thank you for that. Uh, that we, we cannot be breaking them with a new release or, or under the uh, notion of modernizing the compiler. Right? right. So we had to be, you know, we had to be clever. We had to deliver find it. ways. <laughs> yeah, we had yeah. to find ways, yeah. deliver value to customers, new customers, as well as keep the legacy uh, enterprise customers or, or people who depend on the old behavior without being burdened by these new features or by the new compiler uh, changes. So in order to do that, uh, one of the examples, uh, one of the uh, uh, channels that we created in, inside the compiler, or mode, uh, if you will say, uh, is uh, permissive minus. Uh, it's basically uh, a way of saying, okay, uh, if, if you ever want a compiler to be more strict and, more, uh, and less permissive about non-standard features that we ha have had in our compiler, then here's a mode that you could turn on and start writing standard C++ code that's portable, uh, that could be compiled by MSVC as well as could be compiled by Clang and, and, and GCC if you want to. Yeah. Um, and so if you throw that, you're getting mostly the new code. And if you're not throwing that, you're sometimes still getting the new code because, yeah. of course, our intention is to have only one. Yes. Um, but yeah. So, uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Permissive Minus, as I said, is one of the channels. Uh, we have also introduced new channels uh, for new features based on the specific standards uh, of. Uh, uh, the standard feature uh, versions uh, and the standard version switches. Those are st uh, st C++ 14, st C++ 17. So this way we could organize around um, for the new features when they get implemented. And, and in some ways matching the other yeah. compilers. Yeah, so yeah, you yeah. get the sort of uh, Yeah, it's, we're still catching <laughs> up. <laughs> Massive yes. in innovation, yeah. yeah. Uh, but so, so that's great. All right, so where does that bring us to? Okay, so where are we today? First of all, um, what should people expect to have work starting in 15.7? So 15.7 uh, is a good milestone, is, a, is, a, uh, is an important milestone, as we said before. Uh, we expect our uh, users, the uh, developers, to throw the std17 switch and expect all the, uh, uh, the C++17 compiler uh, language features uh, to be uh, available under that switch. Yeah, there, uh, there's just to put the small asterisks on there, in the libraries, I believe uh, the character conversion things, there yeah, are still a few yeah. more to come which, in which a is future what, update. Yeah. Um, but as far as we know, this those are not available in actually anyone's libraries yet, so that's good to know. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm saying compiler, the language. <laughs> so we'd be excited and it'd be a big announcement if it were just C++17 being uh, language complete, modulo that particular library. Mm. Um, but there are also things from the old standards that we're adding here, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the uh, C++11 and C++ 98, <laughs> they have uh, their, their features that we have been working on and have been shipping partial support in the last few releases. Those are uh, Expressions Fine and the two-phase name lookup. Um, these are big behemoths. We, we <laughs> couldn't just do it in, in one release. Yeah. Uh, it, they, as I said earlier, it depends on a lot of the, the, back, the inner working of the compilers that we worked on. Uh, we're, we're finally with this release saying that we are caught up with these. Of course, we have few bugs. We are tracking those bugs, but we, we're happy to say that we are done with these features. Right. So let's talk. Uh, uh, it's great. Like, what's next, though? Like, what's left to do? What What's left in our conformance backlog? And then we'll get to what we want people to do. For what's us next? next? Uh, what do you mean? What's next? We're done. <laughs> This is <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the bugs are out. Yeah, we're done. We're, it's we're wonderful. Done. Me yeah. and Woolsey will be retiring to a desert island, yeah. sipping out of some sort of umbrella drink. Is exactly. that correct? All so right. we would just will. Um, so as we as we enable ourselves, as we modernize our compiler, uh, we, we we open our ourselves into many many more opportunities and many more features. Obviously, we are going to uh, keep up with the C++ standards. We don't want to fall behind. Right. We want to keep up with them. We want to we stay ahead of uh, 
uh, uh, uh, features that are released already. Yeah, we've uh, got a lot of contribute, TS work to yeah, work contribute to, to uh, yeah. TS technical specifications, uh, drive them. Uh, an example is we're already working on C++ modules uh, TS uh, in, in our compiler, and we're going to continue working through that, uh, and as well as look into other uh, TSs that are going to be prominent, uh, would be uh, available in the next uh, stand uh, C++ standard. So I let me let I me play the role of the uh, of the angry internet commenter, and do, we we can do a little rude Q and A right now. Okay. So uh, um, what about the preprocessor? What about the preprocessor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, the preprocessor. Uh, you know, from our point of view, uh, it is also old, uh, and we we are definitely working on uh, rewriting the preprocessor uh, ground up as well, uh, and we want to follow the same model as we did with the new parser. Uh, replace it in place without any impact to the existing right. customers. But I think also like the other stuff that we did, the preprocessor has enough weird quirks in it that we'll have to be careful about yes. how yes. Um, how people opt in and tell us that they need that. Uh, so it may be one of these permissive minus kind of situations just to set expectations. Exactly. I think. So right. uh, when I say the same model, uh, what I mean is exactly that. We we need to find a way that that we could carry both the existing uh, the the new customers and, and the old customers forward without hindering them uh, 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 with any uh, adoption blockers. So the other question I get asked all the time um, by uh, people on the internet, for instance, is like, okay, but um, you say that you've caught up on conformance, but I still have you know such and such a bug. So if people are seeing conformance gaps, like what should they do or what should they expect from us? Mm. Well, that's a good question. Um, I also used to be the uh, the test lead for the compiler team uh, for <laughs> I don't know ten years or so. <laughs> so so uh, this so is testing. near to your heart. Oh yeah, testing is is a big deal to me uh, and to our team. Um, uh, bugs when when we have bugs, we we, we look at uh, dev community bugs for a compiler, and we those we take them very very seriously. We we want to fix them. We want to fix them all in in the next release as much as we can. Um, so we have taken many. Uh, Many positive actions, uh, many different approaches in, in how we want to validate the compiler in, in every release. Just quickly, historically, we used to have these you know, built-in in-house tests that we have developed ourselves. Mm -hmm. We also purchase uh, third-party tests from you know, Plumhall, Perennial, McCluskey, and we ensure those are okay. We build some big, big internal code bases, and we say this is good, and we ship it, and it's, it's, been, you know, it, it's been good enough-ish. Uh, for the past releases, but going forward and in and, and last few releases, we we have focused more towards community uh, code bases, uh, stuff like that's open out source there. Stuff. Yeah, open source libraries, uh, projects that are open source, um, the the code bases that we've never considered or never really uh, built in house. We've only received bugs after we've shipped, and then we would fix it, and, and it'll go it will go back and forth three times until the project finally builds clean. So we wanted to go after those, uh, and today we have uh, two uh, testing rep repositories uh, that we actively use uh, mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Uh, we have uh, VC package, as you all know, the uh, the build uh, package mm -hmm. manager uh, that has about six, seven hundred now. I think we're at nine hundred now. Actually. Wow! Yeah. So nine hundred C plus plus libraries um, that target. Um, Visual Studio or built in, in Windows, right? Mm -hmm. So those are built uh, on daily basis, uh, uh, at most, at least uh, on, on a weekly basis, uh, with the development compiler, so that we we catch any regressions before we actually release. So the certainly, compiler. if you have open source stuff, you should add it to VC package so that oh, we yes, can make definitely. sure that we don't break it. That was that would be if you are an open source library owner, uh, a C plus plus open source library owner, and you want to. You want to ensure that <laughs> MSVC compiler in the future doesn't break you or, or, or vice versa, right? The best way for you to do that would be to subscribe yourself and add yourself to the VC package. Right. And then, model. like for instance, we actually end up making contributions when, when, when there are necessary changes in the compiler and yes. stuff like that. Yes. So, uh, just real quick, uh, looking back, it, I, would, I would actually consider and I would actually say that. Uh, Building open source libraries and projects from GitHub through VC package or you know in, in our daily model, custom one, yeah. 
that has been the most valuable testing method for compiler than our existing in-house tests that we have written. I mean, those are good baseline tests. Yeah, they're years But it's just, <laughs> just the, the language is evolving so fast. There's new code just going out, you know, just coming out left and right. Keeping up with that, the only way to do that is reaching out, somehow reaching out the latest uh, C++ code, and that's, that to me is VC package. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Any other things that where you want to tell people, like we like any libraries that you want to call out, as we know we're working on them, or oh yeah, yeah. So uh, we we definitely want to go after some uh, popular libraries like uh, ranges, uh, range v three, uh, and the ranges for the standards one that's been considered. Uh, that I think depends the on concepts. One. Yeah. yeah. Um, as well as boost hana. Uh, that's yes. we have. We've been working on that many uh, last many releases. We have identified where the problems are, and we with these you know. Two phase name lookup, expressions, finia fixes, those are getting slashed. We, we still have uh, some struggles that we Not have to Not quite yet on those ones. Yes. Um, uh, all right. And also, uh, Facebook uh, Folly uh, just came online that, 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 um, what, that had never been built with MSVC. So. Great. Um, and so, okay, so call to action. So 15.7 at the moment that we are recording this is in the preview channel. Um, please, by all means, download that if you have uh, code. Um, please build with it. Make sure we are pretty confident that we have, uh, you know, solid quality in that. But you know, definitely want to hear about it. If we have any conformance gaps, let us know. Um, add your package to VC package so that we can make sure that we yes. keep it running as we go yeah. forwards. Um, please, by all means, go to Dev Community with for, for any bugs that you have, and in particular, if you could upvote ones if somebody else has filed it, that will help us do our prioritization work. We're going to fix everything. We're going to fix all the bugs, but we are going to do them in an order. And please help us uh, use your upvotes to identify the most important ones to go after first. Yes. OK. And thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.